All right, so we'll make this short and sweet. Todd Mack over your musical introduction. Uh, Todd is one of the greatest, most creative musicians, composers, directors, creators in the world. So please. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the organizers of the event uh, at the very beginning uh, asked me if I could help select some musical interludes uh, for today and tomorrow. Uh, first, for the pleasure of the music, and also because music is, as we know, one of the deepest human experiences, uh, which touches us so deeply uh, psychologically and cognitively and neurologically. And we don't really know why, but we're getting to know better why, and we're also getting to know better how to marshal that power in specific ways and positive ways. So uh, we have four wonderful uh, musical interventions. The first is by one of my favorite musical neuroscientists, Psyche Louie. Psyche has a PhD from Berkeley. Uh, she taught at Wesleyan and now, uh, for this last year, has come to Northeastern University right across the river uh, where she's working on music, neuroscience, and creativity in general. Uh, she's going to play some music by kind of amateur musician named Bach, pretty good one though. Um, and we'll talk to you a little bit about music and expectation. Psyche. Thank you, uh, Todd. It's a great honor to be here. Um, so I, when I thought about what might be an interesting topic to introduce to a group uh, like this one, I thought, well, over the course of the, uh, today and tomorrow, you will be exposed to lots of ideas that meet your expectations and some that even violate your expectations. And these violations of expectations are what we find to be exceptionally rewarding. Um, so I thought that music might be a perfect uh, way to demonstrate these um, fulfillments and violations of predictions and expectations. So my, in my research life, I spend uh, most of my time thinking about this overall question, how does sound become music? Right? So sound are, after all, just a, a couple of, um, of sound waves, right? Mo air molecules that are hitting your ears. And somehow, through this hugely nonlinear transformation that your brain does, um, it turns it into a musical experience that's intense and personal, um, and sometimes even gives you the chills. So let me play you um, a couple of isolated chords to start with. OK, so um, the first one might sound a little bit off-putting. Right? Um, the second one sounds more smooth. But when you give it a little bit of context, right? so the first one, you might have thought sounded dissonant, off-putting. But in the context of this theme, now it's, it's gone from being off-putting to being inviting. Right? It's asking for what's coming next. Right? And so what's coming next is You've got the beginning of a story. Now, so, in, um, so the ability to predict what's next, right? So what, what the context give us is a little bit more prediction, right? uh, predictability. And the ability of predicting what's next in most circumstances is what we find to be rewarding. Um, so in my lab, I'm starting to think about all the different neural systems that might be at play um, to give rise to how this auditory system does these predictions, makes these predictions, uh, and, and how those predictions might be rewarding. I won't go into all of these, um, these regions here, but um, I'll just go into a couple of, of major um, topics that I've, I've gotten into that really highlight this interplay between the auditory system, which is making the predictions, and the reward system. Um, so how many of you get chills when you listen to music? Really good music, right? So quite, quite a few people. Um, oh, and when I say chills, I, you might also be thinking about actual goosebumps or actually uh, some, maybe a lump in your throat. Maybe you want to tear up. Um, maybe you feel uh, completely absorbed. Maybe make, music uh, makes you feel like you're, going, you're transporting in time to some other place. Um, so there are some of these, these um, experiences that are very visceral, like they actually pertain to a part of your body. So, so something like a lump in your throat or, or a pit in your stomach. There are other experiences that are quite abstract or even transcendental, right? Something like feeling like you've, you're completely absorbed, you've lost a sense of time. Uh, but those are all strong emotional experiences that are quite commonly reported um, during musical experience. 
And what we found uh, is that we, we've compared people who, who often report getting these experiences and then controlling for lots of possible uh, other differences. Uh, we've compared them against a group of people who don't really report getting these experiences. Um, and we've looked at specifically the white matter connectivity within their brains. And what we're seeing is that there are larger volumes of white matter connectivity um, that we're identifying between um, seed regions of interest that are in the auditory system in the temporal lobe and state regions of interest that are in, in the frontal lobe um, that are important for emotion and reward, specifically the nucleus accumbens and the uh, medial prefrontal cortex. Now, we've also moved on to uh, another group of uh, very special individuals, um, people who have musical anhedonia. Um, and these are people who, um, like you, they enjoy long walks on the beach, they enjoy good food, um, they enjoy um, poetry, they just don't feel it for music. Um, and so what we're seeing now, um, starting to look at uh, people in this special population, uh, what we're seeing is that uh, people uh, who have musical anhedonia have uh, different patterns of connectivity between the auditory regions and the nucleus accumbens, which is really a center uh, for reward um, that gets activated, as I'm sure we'll hear um, throughout uh, today and tomorrow, uh, gets activated for, uh, for food, sex, and money, and rock and roll. Um, <laughs> So it turns out that music um, is, is activating the same, uh, same region. And so I think that um, what I'm coming to, to realize is that music is really an organized set of predictions um, and how best to end, um, what, what best way to end uh, if not by playing you a little bit of, of these, uh, these organized predictions. So this is uh, most of J.S. Bach's Partita number three um, in E major and specifically the Gavotte and Rondo from that. And you'll see how there are repeating patterns that um, make, make the music specifically more, most rewarding. <laughs>